And no season that we have in our culture is more abundant than the season that we experience at Christmas. Our culture is so almost hyped up on everything of Christmas. It's got to be presents and there's a tree and there's so much food. Everything is in abundance. And I was really thinking about what I was going to share tonight. And I was just really overcome by the Lord's desire that he redefines abundance to us tonight. And that's what I really want to do with you. You know, we are cutting ourselves short if we think abundance is roast dinner, or if we think abundance is lots of presents. And, you know, those things are lovely, but they are not the abundance of Jesus Christ. When he comes into your life, you will experience his abundance. And it's better than an all-inclusive holiday. And we are selling ourselves short if that's what we think abundance is. And so I really want you to be awakening your hearts to redefine abundance tonight. Who's excited to do that? Who wants to know what the Lord says about abundance? You know... You don't have to go very far to see his abundance, even in very creation. You know, I've been skiing a few times, even as a, as a young kid, to be in the Alps and just be like, Jesus, you have to be real because this is so beautiful. You have to be real. His creation is abundant. The gift of Jesus Christ is abundant. You know, I love that we got to do communion tonight. There is no greater gift than the gift that the Father gave us in Jesus. If you're not sure what abundance is, look at the cross. It is so rich in goodness. It is so rich in power. I love what Sal was saying about we get to celebrate the cross. You know, the cross changed everything for our lives. And when we are truly walking in the abundance of Christ, it's because our eyes are fixed on what he did on the cross, knowing that my life right now changes because of what he did on the cross. He He is an abundant God. We don't have to live in lack. You know, he is not in lack. I have the absolute privilege of working for the Kenyan Children's Project. It is an amazing charity. You will hear us go on and on about it. It is amazing. And I have learned so much of the, from the people that we, we get to work with in Kenya. You know, my whole desire is to fight for the poor so they would not be in lack, so that they would be empowered for a better future. That's everything that I'm excited about. And that's what Jesus does. He takes us from absolute lack to absolute abundance just with one look, one word, one touch. Why don't you come with me to Deuteronomy? If anyone knows the abundance of Christ, it's the Israelites. You know, he was God, they were God's chosen people, the ones that he set aside for himself. They were had been oppressed for many generations in Egypt by Pharaoh, but the father had a plan for them. He wanted to bring them out of slavery into freedom. Um, I'm just going to read 2 verse 7. You can turn there. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. You know, by definition, nothing is more in lack than a desert. There is literally nothing there. Nothing. Other than sand and probably some horrible snakes. But there is nothing in a desert. There is no water. And the father made sure for 40 years he sustained them in a desert. If God can sustain the Israelites for 40 years in a desert, he can sustain you where you are in your world. He is a great God. He is massive. I'm just feeling such a stirring of the father tonight. Because we need to get this. Once we get this, 
out there has to change when we understand what he did for us. It changes everything. He can make a desert abundant. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, what's he going to do in your life? You know, for the Israelites, he parted the sea. How awesome would that be? Can you imagine what that looked like? That moment he parted the sea so they could walk right through. He did miracle upon miracle for these people. He sent manna from heaven to feed them. And he said that they did not lack anything. If you turn with me over to Deuteronomy 8, it says, Verse 4, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes just walking around London, I get blisters. This is awesome. They walked around the desert for 40 years and their feet didn't even get swollen and their clothes didn't wear out. This is an abundant God. Verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God. For the good land he has given you, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commandments, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. He blessed them beyond measure. He was taking them into the promised land. He did all of those things for them, countless miracles. He sent the plagues to set them free. He parted the sea. He fed them with manna. And still, he had to say, do not forget. That's crazy to me. How, how could you, like, how could you actually forget? That's impressive to forget the Lord your God after he'd done all of those things. And yet he still had to say, do not forget when I'm blessing you in the promised land, when I'm increasing your herds, when I'm blessing you with homes and families. Don't forget me. That was the cry of the Father's heart to theirs, despite everything that he had done for them. And how much has he done for us? And yet we forget. We forget what he's done. We're so easy to shout about this problem and complain about this lack. And we're missing the home of blessing that we're living in right now. Don't forget what he's done and celebrate what he's done. Be joyful about what he's done. Be thankful. There's so much joy in what he's done. And I really felt in worship, just it was just bubbling inside me, the promises that he has over this house. I really believe that this is going to be a year where people that are longing for spouses, I really believe that the Father is releasing spouses to people. And I really felt just on that, he was there was like his hand lifted and it was like spouses were just running forth. <laughs> So if you want one, receive it. (laughs) But with that, he said, don't forget. If I release this to you, will I still be your number one? And that's not just for the people that are waiting for their spouse. That's for the married people as well. Will he still be number one? I really felt, you know, the father, just like with the Israelites, he he declared so many times they were chosen people. And I really felt that. The Father was stirring for Catch the Fire London. I'm not saying we're his chosen people, but there is something special in this house. And I felt that we need to get this right. I felt like we were realigning ourselves in January, ready for the year, because he wants to release abundance in this house. He wants to release jobs and better jobs, spouses, homes. He wants to release these things. But will you remember him? Will you celebrate him when he does? And will you remember next month when there's something else that you want or you need. Remember him. Take joy in him. This stuff is exciting. You know, we have been blessed beyond measure. And I always want to be grateful for what he's doing. You know, if we get a building for church tomorrow, every time we walk in that building, are we going to remember that it came from him? You know, don't ever let the gift become bigger than the giver. 
All of this stuff, everything that he does, everything that he releases, it's so that we can know the giver. You know, there's so many times in my life where God has blessed me outrageously. Some of my most precious memories of of God the provider were when I was interning and I literally had no money to buy food. It was the most beautiful time in my life in learning his goodness and his kindness. Even just remembering, there was this one time I was walking to church with um, another intern at the time, Debs, and I heard the father say, I'm giving you a Mac. And so I stopped and I said, but Debs, I just heard this crazy thing. God's going to give me a Mac. Because my laptop at the time was really causing me a lot of troubles. Two days later, I went to the office on my desk, wrapped up with a bow on top, was to my precious beloved daughter from your Abba, a MacBook Pro. Not only that, was a thousand pounds for me to use as I wish so I could go to America and be a bridesmaid for my friend. Jesus. And that was from, I don't even know who gave that gift. Someone had seen me painting at a conference two months previously and gave an anonymous donation. You know, but that didn't make me go, oh, I praise the MacBook, I praise the MacBook. That taught me, Jesus, you are so kind. You are so good. You are so outrageous. He, he's Oh, turn to your neighbor and just say he's good. There's no other word. He's good. He is good. He is massive. He is good. I was really challenged when I was preparing. God kept reminding me of the scripture in Matthew 5, 3, but also it repeats in Luke Luke 6, 20, if you turn with me there. This is a challenge, but challenges are good. Who thinks challenges are good? You know, I don't know about you, but I want the whole gospel. I don't want to pick and choose gospel. I don't want to select and highlight the bits that make me feel good about myself. I want the whole gospel Luke 20, verse 6. No, sorry, Luke 6, verse 20. Thank you, someone was listening. If I had a Mr. Foreman Golden Star, you'd get one right now. (laughs) Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Sometimes Jesus' kingdom is so upside down to ours. Blessed are you who are poor. That is such a challenge, poor, to be aware of your need of grace and provision. No matter how wealthy God may make me, I want to remain poor in spirit. I always want to remain aware of my need of his grace and provisions. And that's what he's saying Theirs is the kingdom. It's not earned. It's not a reward. It's the gift. It's a gift that he lavishes on those who are poor in spirit. I hope that that's everybody in this house, that we remain always knowing I need him. I want him. I need him. I'm longing for him. I'm crying out for him. It goes on to say in verse 24, but woe to you who are rich for For you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Yikes. Yikes. He is not saying that riches are wrong, but he is saying you cannot depend on them. I want you to depend on me. Please hear me when I say that I'm not saying riches or wealth is wrong, but when it becomes your comfort, that is wrong. When it becomes the crutch in which you lean on, that is wrong. And that's why I was sharing that story about when I was an intern. I'm so thankful that he taught me when I had so little what it looked like to be generous, what it looked like to receive, because that's he's my crutch. And if you're if you're struggling financially right now, 
Why don't you thank the Lord for that? Why don't you thank the Lord that he's teaching you that he is all that you need? That he is the one that you will rely on? That he's the one that says, give it all and you do it generously and with joy? It's a joy to give when he says give. You know, I have an amazing husband, but he... <laughs> But I, he cannot be my first point of call. He cannot be my crutch. Yes, he can support me. But it is the Holy Spirit's job to comfort me first and foremost. And so this isn't just talking about riches. This is um, financially. This is talking about the riches that we have in our life. You know, it's so easy to be distracted by by family and wealth and all of these things which our society says that we need. And actually, I really feel tonight he's calling us back to be so fixed on him, so aligned with him, not looking left or right. No, this is my goal. Jesus, you are my goal. Jesus, you are the one I'm going after. Isabel put it really well. I loved it. She said, we don't own anything, but everything of his is ours. That is such a beautiful way that she put it. We don't know, own anything, but everything of his is ours. You know, we have access to the heavenly realms. Jesus has given us access to everything and more that we could possibly want or need. He has given us access. I know that when there is a blind woman in front of me, I can reach up and I can pull down, I can grab sight and I can release it on behalf of my father. When there's a deaf person in front of you, when there's somebody lost out on the street, that I can reach up and I can pull love out and I can throw it right deep into their heart. We have access to everything. Jesus paid the highest price for us to get access to this. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet, but no, everyone's on a fast. It's like we've got access to all of this stuff. We just need to reach up and release it. We need to recognize who he is. We need to know that he's the abundant one, the massive one, without lack. We need to know that because if we don't know that, when you're stood in front of someone that is poor and has nothing or is sick or is in depression, you will have nothing to give them. But if you know him, you will have everything and more to give that person. Your marriages will be better. Your family life will be full of joy and love. Who needs that in their family? You know, no one did family better than the Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus. Grab a hold of it for your family if that's what you need. You know, when I was preparing, Jesus gave me this picture of me as a child receiving this amazing bike. And there was so much joy. I was so excited. I got a new bike. It's amazing. When you receive a gift, there is joy. That is a normal response. But I really felt him calling us as a body and a church to mature in how we receive gifts. And I was thinking about this Christmas when I was receiving gifts. Not only I am filled with that same joy and excitement, but I'm also filled with an understanding that someone has sacrificed for me to have that. And so I really felt that there's a maturity coming to us, not just individually, but as a body, when we receive a gift from the Lord, when somebody gets healed, when somebody gets blessed with a new home, we're understanding not only the joy that comes with it, but also having the maturity to understand the sacrifice that Jesus paid in order for us to receive that. I... I want to take you to two kings. I love kings. It is amazing. There are some phenomenal miracles in there. Elijah and Elisha, the things that those two got up to, honestly, it's amazing. You, please, I would encourage you all to go away and read kings. It is amazing. I really want to focus in on two kings, chapter four. It's talking about the widow's oil. And I really just wanted to mention, if you're a widow in this place, you are precious to the Father. 
the only religion acceptable to the Father is to love the orphans and widows in their distress. And that is what this verse you see in a whole new amazing way. I'm going to read it from, from verse 1. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, her husband is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? The servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go round and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each jar is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go and sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Come on, how cool is that? Can you imagine? what that looked like. (laughs) What do you have that you would consider little that the Father might turn and use? What in your world, in your heart, what skills do you have? What gifts is the Father giving you that you consider to be little, not even worth highlighting even, maybe not even worth sharing with your friend. What are those little things that the Father actually wants to call out of you? Because according to this, he can turn a very little into a very lot. Even just what Alistair was just sharing, that is amazing. That is powerful. What God can do with little is amazing. Turn to your friend and say, this is an amazing story. You know, this lady, bless her, she's obviously had a really tough time. Her husband had died, and now these people are after her sons. That is a stressful situation, potentially. That is distressing. Her focus became so consumed with the lack, with the fear, with the problem, with the trial. What am I going to do? I've lost my husband, and now someone's coming to take my sons away. She is freaking out. She runs to Elisha, and you will notice there is no wavering in him. His response is, how can I help you? Tell me what you have in your house. That is a man that knows God can do anything. That is a man that knows. He's seen the impossible. He's seen God do it in so many stories before. He knows God is limitless, and he's speaking as a man of faith. Okay, right, tell me what you've got got in your house, because I know the Father in heaven is going to do something with that. I don't think he's saying that because he's had a prophetic word or a word of knowledge. He just knows his Father, and he just knows he's really good. And so he knows when there's a problem in front of him, my Abba, my Father has a solution. And that's what came, because he dared to believe Another amazing thing about this scripture is the fact that Elisha told her to shut the door behind her and her sons. In my footnotes, it says the impending miracle was not intended intended to be a public sensation, but to demonstrate privately God's mercy and grace to this widow. Cherish the things that God does in secret. Cherish the things that he does in private. That widow is never going to be the same again. I bet you when she was in lack, maybe she was hungry next year. I bet you she didn't go into freaking out because she knew there is a God of the impossible and he is alive. And I have access to him. The oil kept flowing until every last jar was filled. 
I can guarantee if there were 10 more jars, they would have been filled. Because that is the kind of God that we have. He doesn't do half miracles. He doesn't do half blessings. If you have started to see a miracle happen, even in your body, I really believe he's going to fulfill that miracle. He's not about the 60% healing. He's not about the 60% blessing. He is a God that goes 110%. 110%. He lavishes out on us. He withholds nothing. And it is his joy to do so. There are no limits. Why don't you bash your friend and say, there are no limits. You know, you may be in debt, but he is the provider. You may be sick, but he is the healer. You may be so riddled with fear, but you know what? His love casts out perfect fear. You might be hungry, but he can multiply food, and I've seen it. There are no limits to what he can do. Let his truth be higher than your circumstance. Let the God of truth be higher than your circumstance. When you're freaking out about lack, don't ask your lack about your lack. Ask him about your lack and see what he says because his abundance will come. You know, I was last week I was out for a run and I was really asking God, about this time and I was reminded of a time that I was in Kenya and this was years ago. It was me and Dan, we were preparing for a mission trip so we're getting really excited about what God was going to do and we had some to-dos for the day and our only agenda was to go and start delivering food to the parishes. So we were going to be doing some feeding programs the following week when everyone arrives um, for the orphans. Um, We're expecting a lot of people to come. So we we filled the car with loads of food and we were driving on our way to this place called Abwali. On the way, we we passed a huge commotion. Dan's not here, he can remember. There was this huge commotion going on and we were like, what's going on? What's going on? And there looked to be someone that looked to me like they were dead. There were so many people around. People were kind of in like heightened distress. So we drove on past and then both Dan and I were like, oh, we have to go back. We have to go back. And our manager at the time turned to us and says, you, we, can't, we can't help that person because in, in Kenya, if you, if you help someone, if you put someone in your car and they die in your car, then you are responsible for that person. Because as we were getting really confused. There was loads of cars around this person, but they weren't taking her to a hospital. And so he was just explaining culturally that um, the pressure of, oh gosh, if someone dies, then I'm responsible. It was just a no-go. We do not come under that. We do not come under fear. We come under what our father says. So we went back. Praise the Lord, this lady was not dead. Hallelujah. (laughs) She was just extremely unwell. She wasn't moving. Um, We prayed for her. We got her into our Land Rover raised her to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, she sat up and started moving. She started speaking. Honestly, she went for basically in a coma to moving, speaking. It was amazing. Praise Jesus for that. You know, God intervenes and that is awesome. We left this lady at the hospital. I can honestly say I don't know what happened to this lady, but I know God did something. We then had to go on to this onto this parish to deliver the food. We got there and they happened to be holding a meeting with all the leaders. And you, we stick out a bit when we're there. So we kind of got called in <laughs> and um, we had to sort of share a few words. And we were so pumped. We had just seen this lady go from literally, I'm about to die to, she's not dying, amen. And we were so pumped and we were so excited. We were telling them like, guys, God just moved in this lady's life. Who's sick? Who can we pray for? Next thing we know, there's a lot of people with problems in that place. There was a lot of sick people there. And honestly, to this day, I have never seen healings like it. There was not one single person that did not get healed. It was like me, Dan, and our manager. And it's like, spread out. There's so many people to pray for. Honestly, and they were not, some of them were headaches, but other than, Some of them were, I can't see you. 
those kind of healings. It was amazing. You know, my agenda for that day was to drop off some rice and beans. But the Father's agenda was so much better. What does it look like when you tap into his agenda? What does it look like when you tap into his abundance and you flow from that? That's all it was. There was nothing special about us on that day. It was just, we believe him. We believe him. We believe that he could do something with this terrible situation. And you know, he is faithful to do that. I really want to challenge your expectation of him because that is key to seeing him move. It's key to seeing him come and transform situations. Just believing that he can, just expecting that God is going to do something with your lack. I think so often we just dwell in our lack because we think we deserve it. That is not godly. He is a kind, loving God. He is a good, good God. Let your perspective match the Father's and you will see the abundance of heaven all around you pouring out of you. Do you want to see that? Do you want to see that kind of abundance of Christ? He breathes out stars. Do you want to see that kind of abundance coming from your hand? In Habakkuk, it talks about the lightning that comes from the hand. How about that when you're praying for the sick? Luke 15, verse 31. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Why don't you nudge your neighbor and say, everything, everything he has is mine. You are sons and daughters of the living God. And everything he has is yours. Is Personally, if I was God, I would not give you people that kind of authority. But he said it. He gives us this kind of power. This is dangerous. Wiggle your hand and say, this is dangerous. Everything I have is yours, declared the Father. Why don't you stand with me? The whole point of tonight, the whole point of tonight is that we would know he is an abundant God. And that we would go from that place of a knowing to being one that carries it. And then that we would go from someone that carries the abundance of Christ to be someone that releases the abundance of Christ. And so first off, I just want you to just shut your eyes where you are. We're going to get really real with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that he is an abundant God? Like, do you know for you? Not because you've heard the stories, but because you've had the stories. Do you know that he is an abundant God for you? Not for the person next to you, but for you, because he loves you, because he cares for you. He is a kind God to you. He is a good God to you. Holy Spirit, right now, all over this place, I ask that you would release the knowledge and the revelation of your abundance. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals the things of the Father. He reveals the secrets of the Father. And right now, the Holy Spirit all around this place is revealing the truth of the knowledge that He is huge, that He is limitless, that He is kind. Why don't you just start to thank him for that as you start to receive the knowledge that is coming your way? Why don't you start to receive? Why don't you start to be thankful? Why don't you start to celebrate that he is abundant and that he gives you a portion of his abundance. He gives you a great portion where he says, everything I have is yours. You have access to all of this. And just repeat after me, I want to do some repentance in here for where we haven't let him be number one, where we've depended on finances, where we've depended on spouses even. It's time to realign with him and say, Jesus, I depend on you and you alone. 
You can repeat after me if you want. Holy Spirit, I am so sorry. Where I have offended you deeply. Where I have looked to other things for comfort. Where I've relied even on gifts you've given me. Instead of relying on you. I choose today to realign my heart with yours. I belong to you, Abba. I thank you that you are good. I receive that as truth to my heart. I thank you that you are my one true God. I thank you that you are alive. And why don't you just prophetically just take a step right now? Why don't you move somewhere fresh? Going from relying on those old things, those things that bring comfort, those things that make you feel like you're secure sometimes. Why don't you just move into a new space? And as you do that, just be declaring in your heart, I am moving to relying solely on you, God. We can thank Him for the gifts in our life. We can thank Him for the provision, for the people, for our husbands and wives. We can thank Him for those things, but the one true God in our life needs to be Him. Don't prize abundant stuff over His abundant love. Why don't you just start to take a deep breath in of His abundance. Holy Spirit, I choose to receive your abundance. I thank you that I get to carry your abundance. I thank you that I get to release your abundance. Just grab a hand of somebody near you or move to find someone that you feel safe with. That's fine too. Start to release the favor of heaven over that person. Start to release the promise of heaven over that person. Start to release the goodness and kindness of the Father over that person. And I declare there will be no lack. There is no lack in Him. There is no lack in Him. There is no lack in Him. Just speak it out over your friend. Give them a Holy Spirit boost where they need a Holy Spirit boost. Let the abundance of Christ come come out of you for the person next to you. Let him fill them. Let him fill you. He is so abundant that even while you're praying for your friend, you can absolutely get blasted by his abundance, by his goodness. He is massive. Let the truth of who God is be real to you right now and start to receive it. Just awaken that person. Call them to a life, to be awakened into the knowledge of His goodness and His abundance. You know, that person is going to leave changed when they're aware and they're expecting the goodness and the abundance of Christ to flow out of them. And this year, we want to commission you to partner with heaven. We want to commission you to go after Him with everything within you. We want to commission you to be someone that gives, not just takes. We want to be commission you to someone that lets the overflow of the heaven come out of you for everybody surrounding you, for everyone in your influence, for everyone that you work with, for your families, that you would be someone that leaks the presence of God in such a powerful way. This is for you, yes, but it's also for them. And I declare that 2017 would be next level of favor and abundance in this house, that people in this house would experience and know that God is an abundant God, that He does not withhold from you. 
And some of you need to break that lie where it's been in your life. He does not withhold from you. He is a good dad. Everything he has is yours. Let his truth be higher. It's time to shift those even just lenses that you have on. How are you looking at the Father? Are you expecting a miracle? Or are you, do you get overwhelmed with a fear? Are you expecting him to break out? It's time for him to break out. And right now I serve notice on every generational curse of lack in this place. Every curse of, of lack that has come down your generational lines in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare it finishes today. This is not a house of lack. This is a house of plenty. This is a house of love. This is a house of abundance. This is a house where love flows. And it's almost like as Sarah was preaching, I was seeing as, as love flows. It's like a creativity of abundance is coming out of the place of love. And some of you need to dig deep into your well of love. Some of you need to dig deeper and the well of love is the Father within you. And some of you need to go back to the, the Father. The Father's love isn't just a, a conference. It's a lifestyle. So some of you need to ask the Father to be Father again. You need to dig deep. You need to dig deep. Sarah, <laughs> sorry for the pun, but she's on the money tonight. You know, I had a word last year that I didn't release about mammon and about manna. And it all comes back to who he is in your life. And so I right now, in fact, why don't you put your hand on your own head and repeat after me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm done with lack. My family's done with lack. My church is done with lack. I'm done with lack. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I put the cross between me and every generational curse that says I am without. And I caveat this, too many of you say you're without friendships. Too many of you say that you're without community. Too many of you say you're without a home. Everything that Sarah spoke of today, if you, it's a Kairos moment the Lord told me earlier as she was speaking. There's a Kairos moment to flip your whole life from lack into abundance. And some of you need to stop looking in on your heart for a moment and start lifting your gaze to your King. Because when you're looking in at your own self, that is where you won't end up in the flow of abundance because you'll look at what you don't have, exactly what Sarah spoke. And so I'm going to ask her to finish this ministry and prophesy from the place of her impartation that she has. And right now, choose to lift your gaze to Him because where generational curses are broken, it's time for the new. It's like a, a launch pad into what He has. So I'm going to ask that you just shake your arms and legs a bit. The old is gone, the new has come, and the launch pad of the prophetic is about to come. So get ready. You have a decision to make tonight. Are you going to be like the widow, certain of lack only, or are you going to be like Elisha? Are you going to receive that anointing right now that is certain, that is certain without doubt or waver, that He has got this, that my God has got this. And I prophesy right now that we would be a people that would know my God has got this, that we would tap into that, that part in our heart that knows that we belong to Him and He is big and He has got this sorted. He has got this covered. And right now I just see these jars just appearing in front of you and the Holy Spirit is pouring. I saw them falling over because they were so filled with oil that, that they couldn't even contain the oil that the Father is pouring out. And I declare that this house would be so overflowing with the Father's oil, the Father's presence, the Father's 
abundance, the Father's provision, that we would be falling over, even if that means we're looking ridiculous, that we would be falling over because we are so undone, so consumed by the goodness and the power of the living King. And I declare that you would be a certain people that is certain on their God. Why don't you just start to stamp your feet and say, I am going to be a certain person. I'm going to know. I'm going to know without doubt that my God is big, that my God is not in lack. And so therefore my situation is not in lack. He is a good God. Stamp your feet and declare it. He is a good God. He is a good God. He is a good God. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. He is a good God. He is a good God. You know, every demon in this place is fleeing right now because He is a good God. He is a good God. I really believe it's time for you to get your freedom right now. The shackles of poverty are falling off of your families, are falling off of your homes and your bodies where you have not recognized your need for Him. You're being realigned right now. You're being realigned. He is a good God. He is a great God. Just breathe that in. Just breathe the richness of His presence in. This moment right here is accessible for you. Every minute of every day, every minute of the night, to be so fixed with the richness of His gaze, the richness of His touch. You are a rich people. You're a rich people because we know we have riches. We know the truth. We always have something to be thankful for. We have Him. We are not in lack. You cannot be in lack if you have Him. Just thank Him. Thank Him because tonight something shifted. Thank Him for the abundance that you're going to see tomorrow, this week, this year. Thank Him for what's coming. Thank Him for the gifts. Thank Him for the love. Thank You for His kindness. Thank Him for His goodness and His mercy and His grace. 